Hello there, science friends, and welcome once again to Photoshop for the Scientist. Thanks for being here. So, I know in my last video, which was part one of how to create a scientific poster inside Photoshop, I was saying that I was going to tell you how to add in text and graphs and figures and other stuff into your poster, but I'm going to hold off on that for now because I realized that uh, at the end of my video last time I had all of these gray boxes which were good for placeholders but didn't really look that nice. So in this video I want to show you uh, what we can do with these gray boxes uh, primarily through the blending options uh, here uh, to make things look a little nicer and to kind of finalize a layout. So without further ado let's uh, get right into it. So the first thing I want to do is uh, duplicate this group here because if things go totally off the rails I want to be able to go back to my original uh, layout and I'm just going to unlock it and to duplicate it I will hit Control J which will duplicate the whole group then I'm going to hide this bottom layer because I don't need it right now and I'm going to set the opacity of this group up to 100 so that I can see what I'm doing so I'm going to twirl this open so we can see all of our layers and text and then I'm going to select my move tool, or it is already selected, and I'm going to make sure this button is selected because this will let us just click on whatever layer uh, we're interested in to select it. And I'm just going to choose one at random here. I'll start with results 2, I guess. And so say I don't like this gray. Well, obviously this gray is pretty gross to look at. But if I wanted to stick with my gradient theme, I can apply a gradient to each individual box. So to do that, uh, first, actually, I'm going to check what colors I used on my uh, background gradient here. So to do that, I'll go down to my gradient fill layer, and I'm going to need to unlock it. And then I'll double-click the layer thumbnail here and click the gradient uh, box. And then I'll double-click this color. And let's see, I've got 189, 40, and 100. I'm just going to bump this up to 190 because that's easier for my stupid brain to remember. And then I'll say OK, OK. And I'm going to lock this back up. And so if I go and select this layer, and now I want to apply that exact same gradient to this box. So to do that, I'm going to go to Effects and select Blending Options. And then I've got this big uh, dialog box here, and you've got all of these options, which we'll look at a few of them today. But I'm going to go down to Gradient Overlay and click it. And you can see here we've got basically the same options for our gradient as we do everywhere else uh, in inside Photoshop with our gradient tool. Uh, so I'm just going to click this box to bring up our color picker and go into double click this little color here and luckily for me it's already filled in because I've done this a few times already and practicing. So uh, I'm going to say OK and OK and OK again and you can see I've got a very nice gradient applied to this box uh, which is the exact same as the background gradient. So I think that looks pretty nice. It's certainly one option that we could apply to the rest of these boxes. But let's try something else. So now I'm going to go to results 1, just choosing this box randomly here. And again, I'm going to go down to my effects button here, and again I'm going to choose blending options. Uh, so what do we want to do this time? Let's have a look. So I don't like the gray, so I definitely want to set that to a white background. So I'm going to go down to color overlay and click that. And you can see blend mode is normal, which is fine. And this little box here, we can select whatever color we like, but I'm going to choose white. And if I pull this out of the way, you can see a nice white box there. But that is also a little boring, so I want to add uh, something else. And what I want to add is a little like blue banner bar across the top here. And so there's a few different ways you can do this, but one kind of sneaky and tricky way you can do it is by using the inner glow. Nope that's a lie. You want to use the inner shadow. And so if I click this, uh, we can set our, we want to make sure the blend mode is set to multiply. And we're going to choose this same blue color that I've been using all over the place just to be consistent. So that's 190, 40, and 100, but obviously choose whatever color you like. We'll say OK. And so I'm going to just move this down a little bit. And you can see the way it's set up now, it just gives me this nice blue uh, sort of header banner across the top. And so the way I achieved that, first of all, was setting the angle to 90 degrees. You can see I can move it around and put uh, the little shadow anywhere I want. But because I just want it at the top, I'm going to leave it as 90. And then I've also just kind of dicked around with my sliders here until I got something that I liked. So you can make the distance whatever size you like, depending on how big you want your header to be. I forget what I had, so I'm just going to make it an even 300. Choke. Uh, this is going to is going to be. Well, apparently it's doing nothing right now. Um, I think it does definitely does something. 
Well, as you can see, I don't always know what I'm talking about, but I know that I did have to set choke to 100%, um, but you can play with it as you like. And size, uh, this is going to be uh, how much our inner shadow sort of creeps into our box here. I guess kind of the take-home point that I'm trying to get across here, uh, you can do what I did and just kind of play around with these sliders until you land on something that you like, which now I've just gone and bungled it all up. Oh dear. Alright, I'm going to pause the video and figure this out one second. Okay, I'm back and I figured out what's going on here. So, the choke is not going to do anything while our size is set to zero, but if we increase our size, that's going to bring in these edge shadows, and then the choke is going to be kind of like how diffuse they are. So if we set it down to 0%, we're going to get a nice diffuse kind of shadow, whereas 100%, we're going to get a nice hard edge. And the hard edge is what I'm after, but I'm also not interested in these sidebars, so I'm going to set my size down to 0, and now we've got kind of what I'm looking for. So it's all a little bit of trial and error, but uh, we've landed on what we want here, so that's good and only slightly embarrassing for me. Uh, so I think this looks good, so I'm going to hit OK, um, but I don't really like the black text here. So first I'm going to select it, and I am just going to nudge it down a little bit using the arrow keys to kind of align it nicer within this uh, header box here. And I don't really like the black, so the good news is that we can use the effects button here and the blending options to do uh, the same stuff to everything. So I think what I want to do is set it to white, uh, just because. So again, we'll just use the color overlay and choose white. But I also want to give it a stroke. So I'm going to choose uh, the stroke option here. And you can see uh, it puts a nice round, or uh, yeah, I guess it's a rounded stroke around our text here. Again, this is kind of just a matter of uh, whatever you think looks cool. Uh, I think outside, so we have the position outside, inside, which because it's so big, it's just going to make it look black, or center which looks disgusting. So I'm going to leave it on the outside. Uh, you can play around with the size. Uh, I don't think I want it totally touching like that, though I do think that looks a little cool. Um, I'm just going to put it to something easy like 10. I think looks pretty good. And so if I say OK, oh, and don't forget you can change your stroke color down here. But I'll say OK. I'm going to zoom in a little bit just by holding Alt and scrolling. Yeah, I think that looks pretty nice. Okay, so I'm going to zoom back out with Control Zero. So here is another option for uh, for your box, and let's do one more. No, let's do two more. Um, let's just do this one randomly. So I've been messing around with colors and gradients and inner shadow. I want to show you, lastly, uh, drop shadow, which I think can be a nice effect. So again, we'll go to the blending options box here. Uh, again, I'm going to put it to a white color overlay because I just like this black or gray box doesn't look very good at all. But I'm going to go down here to drop shadow. And so you can see we have like a whole bunch of options here. But generally we want uh, blend mode to be multiply. Like the, def the defaults are probably going to be okay for your purposes. And again, it's just a matter of kind of like tinkering around with these sliders. You can see down here how it's affecting my drop shadow. But it's just kind of playing around, seeing what you think looks good. Uh, I don't really have too much invested in this drop shadow, so probably just leave it like this. Um, the quality and the contour here is uh, basically trying to show what your drop shadow will look like. So it's going to be a little different no matter what you choose here. Obviously, probably this is the default is going to be the one you want. But if you're wanting to try something a little funkier and different, feel free to uh, try these different options. Myself, I've never really used them all that much, but they're there if you want them. So I'm going to say OK out of that, and then I'm going to just zoom in again to take a little look at this, and I think that's pretty cool. Sometimes it might be nice to have what looks like kind of cards popping out of your background. But I'm going to hit Control-0 uh, to get the full poster. And the last thing I want to show you is that we're not completely limited uh, to just use these blending options here. We can go right in and modify our shapes directly. So to do that, I'm going to select the black arrow tool, uh, which if you don't see, you have two options here, but we want the black one or the path selection tool. And then I'm going to click the summary box here, which hopefully that's... Mm, is that the one we want? Nope. Okay, so actually first what I'm going to do is just use my move tool to select the layer that I want. And then I'm going to use my black arrow tool to get that box, which I now have. And so you can see, because we used a shape layer, 
Uh, we've still got all of these options along the top if we, top if we want to change things. So first I want to change my fill to white because as I've said I'm not crazy about this gray. And you'll see actually also we can get rid of the fill entirely, uh, put a color, or we can also apply a gradient here similar to what we did over here. So it's just another way of working. Uh, what do we have here? I think this is a pattern overlay? Yeah. So if you want to put a funky pattern on too, then by all means, I think it looks a little silly, but the options there. Anyways, I'm just going to go back and select white. And we also have some options for our stroke here. So uh, right now we just have a solid uh, black line, but say you want to do maybe a lighter gray, something a little less obtrusive, and say you want to make it dotted. So we'll just select the dotted line here. Uh, you've got some options for your caps and how you want it aligned. So this is inside, center, or outside. And I'm going to stick with inside. And with our size here, again, you've got a slider that you can kind of just tinker around with until you're happy. Uh, I'm going to go with 20, which is a nice round number. That looks pretty good to me. And I'm just going to click off of this to see how it looks. And yeah, that looks okay. And we can even take it one step further if we wanted to take this box and then let's say Control J to duplicate it. And then I'm going to hit Control T to resize. I'm just going to put a little box around summary here. And this box is going to look exactly the same as the one I just copied. And I'm just going to kind of move things around. That looks pretty good to me. And then I'm just going to nudge summary using the arrow keys kind of more into this box. And then if I select off of that, maybe I'll zoom in a little bit to have a look. Yeah, didn't do a very good job there. So I'm just going to click my box and kind of just nudge it around with the arrow keys until I I'm kind of happy with how it looks. Try to line it up so that my dotted lines look kind of less crappy than they do. Anyways, it still doesn't look amazing, but uh, if you had more time than me, which I'm sure you will, then uh, you can kind of nudge this around to your heart's content. Anyways, so that's that. I'm going to hit Control zero again to have a look at everything here. So you've got a few options now, um, and there's plenty of more to cover, but let's say that you're happy with one of these. Uh, let's just choose this one for now. And you want to go ahead and just apply these exact same effects to every other box. Um, very luckily, we don't have to go and do that manually. Uh, we can just copy these effects to everything. So to do that, uh, first of all, um, you can see in my layers panel here, things are getting a little busy uh, because we've got all of these layer effects uh, showing. So if you want to hide them all at once, here's a little handy trick is if you hold alt and click this up arrow, it will hide everything. Uh, similarly, if you hold alt and click the down arrow, it will show all of your effects. But because I want to kind of make things a little less busy here, I'm going to hold alt and minimize them. And then if you want to apply the effects that you have to other squares, all you need to do again is just hold alt and click and drag this little effects icon down to the um, layer that you want to change. So you can see I've done it to the title and my exact effects are applied, same color and same uh, size for my inner shadow and all of uh, everything you need. So you would just go ahead and do that to all of these squares and similarly you would do the exact same thing with your text layer. So you can see my results one here. I've got this effects button or icon here so I'm just going to hold alt and click and drag that onto title and you can see the exact same effects are applied. So I think that probably does it for this, uh, this video. Again, I, th I promise you in my next one I will show you how to add in some text and how to bring in your uh, figures and your graphs and whatever. Um, but that'll be for another time. And so with that, I guess I'll say as always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Um, but otherwise, I will sign off as always. But well, actually, before I sign off, I will say again that I have this uh, new Patreon channel here. So if you've learned something from these videos, or if you want to, I don't know, show your support for the channel, I do have my Patreon feed set up. So if you want to go ahead and even just donate a dollar per video, that's, uh, that would be very much appreciated to me, just to see that there's support, some support out there. And really, I'm only releasing like one video a month, so it's a dollar a month. It's really not that much money. But I understand not everybody has uh, extra money, especially if you're a grad student, so do whatever you like. Uh, I'm not here to judge. Um, but yeah, it's, it's there if you want to help. But in the meantime, I will sign off by saying, as always, you worked hard to get that data. 
So why not uh, work a little harder to make sure that uh, your poster looks amazing? So that you can have an amazing poster for that data. Like, uh. Alright, well, that's it for today, folks. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.